Hello everybody and welcome to another video of R&R Partners. My name is Ruxandra and today we're going to talk about a very requested topic for our channel. It's how to get a loan or a mortgage in Romania as an expat. Recently we've done a video about how to open a bank account in Romania. We would link it somewhere here in a card. And while opening a bank account in Romania is great, maybe sometimes it's not enough. You might also need some financing where you want to buy a home. Because to be honest, even if our country is not that big, real estate can be quite pricey. Especially when you think about big cities like Bucharest or Cluj-Napoca in Timisoara. In Bucharest, for example, if you're looking for a studio, of course, depending on how big you want it to be, the location, if you want it furnished or not, in an older building or in a new building, the prices can go from around 30,000 euros to 40,000, 50, and even 70,000 euros or even more if it's a very modern home. And this is just for a studio. If you need a bigger apartment, for example, a three-bedroom apartment, if you have a family, when, or when you're actually looking to buy a house, either in Bucharest or in the outskirts of the city, prices will be well over 100,000 euros, even 200 or who knows more depending on the project and uh, how much uh, of a room you want to have in that home. And not everybody wants to rent forever. There are many people who of course would rather rent a place than buy it. We also made a video about renting a home, which we will link here. But for whoever wants to buy a home, you might either have some money put aside, buy it cash, no problems there, or you might want to get a bank financing so that it's not such a big uh, pressure on your budget. Because to be honest, even if you have some money set aside, maybe you want to do something else with it, like investing, or maybe you want to put something aside for retirement or for your family, and you would rather just get a loan, a mortgage for your home. Now, first things first, when you actually find a place that you want to buy, our first advice is that you should not just go from bank to bank and see what their offers are for a mortgage. In order to save time and even money, you would rather go to a financial consultant or a loan broker. We recommend people, very good people in this field all the time to our clients because we are a law office, we do not do that for them. But somebody specialized in loans can have connections to many banks and make sure that your file goes um, uh, faster in the process. And another thing that they can help you with is know each bank what kind of offers has. For example, some banks might not be so expat friendly. Like if you have uh, income from abroad, they might say from the beginning, we will not give you a loan. Or another bank might give you that loan, but might have a higher interest rate or ask you for a bigger deposit when you begin the process. And again, instead of going all around the city from a bank to another, You'd rather just go to a financial consultant and in about half an hour they can walk you through the process and see exactly which banks could work for you. Another thing that you should be careful about is before actually securing such a bank loan, you should never sign anything like a pre-contract with the actual owner of the home. We had a recent case with one of our clients he was a Romanian citizen, but also non-EU citizen, and his wife was not Romanian, he was just non-EU by citizenship. And the owner was pressuring them a lot to sign this pre-contract in order to reserve their home. And of course, to pay quite a big sum for that uh, specific apartment. But what they failed to, to tell them is that because the couple was married, Basically, the apartment would belong to both of them in the end, and because the spouse was non-EU, she would need a special fiscal code quite, uh, called NIF, NIF, which is obtained from the fiscal authorities in Romania, and they were not able to get this code themselves because they wanted to stay abroad, and they didn't want to give power of attorney to someone in Romania to get it for them, and basically they just decided that it was uh, rather better for them just to let go of the house, not to buy anymore, because it was such a big hassle. But imagine going through this process and finding out all this important information after you have already given the seller 10,000, maybe 20,000 euros money, which you might not uh, end up obtaining back in the future. So that is why it's better to come to a professional first and get actual legal advice. 
What you usually do for clients, as I mentioned, is not to go with them from bank to bank, that is what a professional loan broker is for, but after they find a home, we can help them with the due diligence process, to check the documents, to make sure everything is in order. And if you want to find out more about how we can help you with this, you can book an online consult with us. The legal consultation can either be held at our office in Bucharest or online by video call. But going back to the matter of, at hand, obtaining a loan as an expat in Romania. As I mentioned, you should be aware that many banks will not give you a loan if you have income from abroad. And this is the case with many expats. The thing is, they are not really against expats, against foreigners themselves, but they see a risk here. For example, me as a Romanian, I'm fiscally registered in Romania, I have my citizenship here. If something happens and the bank gives me a whole lot of money for my home and I defer on my loan, so I no longer pay the installments on time, they have many ways to get their money back. They can garnish my accounts, they can see if I'm employed or not, if I have income or not, and in the end, they pretty much will get their money back. But imagine if you are a foreigner who has lived in Romania for one, two years, maybe more, who knows where you'll go next, if you will stay in this country or not, and they are thinking that if your money comes from abroad, they might not have access to your employer, they might not have access as easily to your bank accounts, you can more easily move your uh, account somewhere else in another country, and they would not be able to garnish them and get their money back if something happens and you default on your loan. So although it can look very frustrating, this is basically the reasoning behind the bank's policies on this. As a side note, this actually happens all the time, like we are not thinking that you might yourself default on your loan, but some people do that, obtain uh, loans in uh, foreign countries and then do not pay them anymore. At some point, we ourselves were involved in such a project, we had a company from Dubai, so the United uh, Arab Emirates, who came to us and said, look, there are so many people from Romania that obtained loans in Dubai for various reasons. And the sums were quite big because these people were uh, working in uh, uh, fields like engineering, hospitality. Some of these people were uh, stewardesses. I think there was a pilot or two there. And these people were not paying their loans in Dubai anymore. They just came to Romania back, they had all this money, which they used for various reasons. They either build a home with them or just spend them for whatever they wanted. And the company from Dubai was no longer able to get the money back. So, as you see, these kind of things really happened and the Romanian banks are thinking about the same way when you, as an expat or a foreigner, come into the bank and ask for quite a, bit of, uh, a big amount of money. And one final thing. If you are living in Romania at this moment, you might have a bank account open with a specific bank. Of course, that bank could be a great uh, resource for you. You already know somebody from the bank. You can go and just tell the bank clerk, I also want a loan. But our advice would be not to actually um, stop at that bank. You should get offers from multiple banks. Because even if that bank already knows you, already knows that you are good for the money, you have the funds in their bank accounts, they might not be as uh, easily persuaded to give you a loan as well. Because the bank policy might be great for opening bank accounts for expats, but not so great when expats are looking for loans and mortgages. And this doesn't happen only to foreigners, it happens to Romanians as well. I actually had a friend myself, she's also a lawyer, and at some point she wanted to buy a home for her and her husband. And they both went to the bank which they were using at that moment, they were receiving their wages in their bank accounts, and they had a lot of issues with their loan file going forward. And they ended up using another bank that they were never using before, they never opened a bank account there, but that specific bank had a lower interest rate, they asked for a lower deposit, and they ended up using that bank instead the one where they already had their bank accounts opened. That is about it for today about getting a loan in Romania as an expat. If you have any questions or maybe there are things in this video that we did not have the time or maybe didn't think about uh, talking, you can leave us a comment down below with your questions. As you might already know, if you have watched our other videos, we answer 
all the questions that are put for us in the comments, so don't worry, you can leave them there. And if you have a more specific topic or you want, of course, the confidentiality with an attorney, you can just email us at office at rrpb.ro or book a legal consultation with us to be held either at our office in Bucharest or by video call. And don't forget, if you enjoyed our content, don't forget to give it a big like and subscribe to our channel because we have many videos about immigration law and commercial law issues coming up. And of course, follow us on social media. We are quite active on Facebook and Instagram. And up until next time, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.